Hey you guys, it's Erin and welcome back. First I just want to say thanks to all of you who are following me on Instagram and who are giving me um, constant video topic ideas. I really appreciate the feedback. It's very helpful to me because sometimes I just kind of um, I'm in a rut or whatever and I can't figure out what you know what's most helpful to you. It's so wonderful for me to hear directly from you on what are the topics and the style issues that you um, you really need to hear about the most. So thank you so much for that thoughtful feedback. I kind of write everything down and have a list and, um, and go over that list. I'm sure there are already a bunch of videos out there about caring for your clothes. This is how I care for a lot of my clothes and I thought that they would be helpful tips and tricks for you. So first I wanna talk about jeans. I've talked about this a little bit in the past. Um, uh, I think in one of my jean videos I talked about how to care for your jeans. But essentially, the best thing that you can do for your jeans is to spot treat any spots that you get. Like you spill, I don't know, ketchup or you spill brownie, I, I don't know, <laughs> on your jeans. Just get a cloth and spot treat it with some cold water and a little bit of soap and hopefully that works. If it doesn't and you need to wash them, that's fine. Um, but you want to wash your jeans as little as possible. When you first get your jeans, it's important, especially if they're that dark, dark, dark midnight blue that kind of comes off on your fingertips, um, to solidify that dye and to keep the color preserved and from bleeding out. What you want to do is take your jeans, put them inside out, put them in your um, wash alone in cold, and put in a little bit of white vinegar in the washing machine. You put it in where you would normally put the detergent and do a quarter of a cup white wine vinegar. And that is supposed to really um, just make the color kind of stay so that it doesn't bleed out. So do that at first and that's gonna, you know, not only keep your other um, garments from getting blue and turning blue, but also keep that really nice deep color that you want and what attracted to you in that to that pair of jeans in the first place. So that's just that's those are my tips for jeans. So you want to definitely wash them as little as possible, solidify that color in the beginning if it's a dark wash jean and also don't dry them. Just hang them dry or lay them flat to dry. They just come out so much nicer when they're not shrinking and they're not um, you know, you wash and dry a pair of jeans, inevitably you put them on, it feels tight, it's not comfortable, they kind of, they, they shrink, it's cotton. So um, don't dry them. That would be my, my last tip about jeans. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about your white shirts because I think white shirts are one of those things that are really important to take good care of if you want to keep them white. Um, and I know a lot of people will just send them off to the dry cleaners and say, hey, you clean them. But often they come back from the dry cleaners sort of yellowed and yucky. Um, I have never sent a white shirt to the dry cleaners and been happy with the outcome, never. It doesn't matter how good the dry cleaner is. For some reason they always come back looking a little muddy and dingy or yellowed. And so what I started doing was just washing my white shirts, not in bleach, no bleach, just regular detergent and with other whites or by itself. And then once it's washed and I feel like all, you know, all of the, whatever was on the collar, whatever's in the armpit, you know, all that's gone and it looks sparkly and white. Now you're left with a shirt, you don't dry it and you're like, eh, it's all wrinkly, it's a mess. Now I gotta spend like 45 minutes pressing it. Well, I absolutely detest ironing. And so what I do is I take the white shirts to the dry cleaners when they're washed and say, can you press them for me? So they can't ruin them, you know what I mean? And they keep that bright, bright, crisp white color. So that's just a thought, think about it. I know it's expensive to have a dry cleaner press. If you'd like to iron, have at it. Um, another thing you can try is steaming, or you could, you know, I picked up this I hate to iron spray, and that helps a little bit, but it's still, with the white cotton shirts, it doesn't quite cut the mustard, and neither does a steamer. So that's why I take those shirts to the dry cleaners and then say, hey, can you press these shirts? Um, I don't want them laundered, I don't want them dry cleaned, I just want them pressed. And that seems to work out in terms of preserving that whiteness of the top. And you know, if you do, um, 
kind of say, eh, I'm just gonna send them the dry cleaners. What you can do in that case is you just know like each season you're gonna replenish your white shirt supply. So it's up to you, whatever works best for you, your you know, your lifestyle and your and your budget, of course. Um, so that's sort of my spiel about the white shirts. With my delicates, my silky fabrics, you know, kind of like the material of the blouse that I'm wearing right now, um, I've done both things, send them to the dry cleaner and also wash them myself. Now they always say dry clean only, um, so you probably should follow that instruction. I'm just gonna tell you what I do. I always feel more comfortable just washing it myself in gentle with wool light um, in cold and then hanging it up to dry and then steaming it afterwards. When I send things to the dry cleaner here, um, and I've tried a bunch, especially silks, and you know how they always make you sign the waiver? They make you sign the waiver because a lot of times it comes out looking differently. And I've noticed with darker silk fabrics especially, they come out with this sort of brushed look to them, almost like a suede look, um, like it's faded quite a bit since the cleaning. And I don't like that look at all. I think it ruins the garment. So I'm just too nervous about the dry cleaner to send those really, really delicate shirts. But it's a little bit extra work because you gotta hang them dry, you gotta steam them. Um, but with the really delicate garments, you can use the spray and the steamer, I think, and that will be effective enough to get all those wrinkles out. The next question um, somebody had asked me was about sweaters, about cashmere sweaters. So I have quite a few cashmere sweaters. I bought a bunch of these. These are um, from Nordstrom. I'll link them below if they're still available. These were really affordable. They're that halogen brand that Nordstrom carries and they're quite fitted. They're, they come in lovely bright colors like this royal blue. I have a coral one. I have a bright pink fuchsia one. Um, I have a black one an orange one, um, but anyway, because they're so inexpensive, which means the, the, the cashmere isn't the best quality, you get balls on these. They are also called pilling. And um, this happens a lot, especially you know if you carry heavy bags or you rub up against something, um, your sweaters are gonna pill. So you have a few options. You could get a pair of fabric scissors and cut off the, the little pills. And I think that's a little bit dicey and risky because you can always put a hole in your sweater. Um, and then there are three sort of de-pilling options. You can do the, the sweater comb, the sweater stone, which is what I have, or you could do the sweater shaver, which requires a couple of AA batteries. I just personally didn't want to monkey around with the battery situation, so I got the, it's like a pumice stone for your sweater. Um, and you can see I've got fuzz on here. I did half of my sweater. I defuzzed this half and I didn't defuzz this half. Can you see the difference? It might be hard to see the difference. But anyway, this, this sweater stone works pretty well. The only thing I would say is it's like a pumice stone and then this, this stuff kind of like, you know, sprinkles and gets like sand particles everywhere and I don't like that. So I just am gonna take this and put it in a zippy bag and put it away until the next time I need it. But I wanted to show you how much fuzz came off just, it's really just yarn, but how much of this yarn came off of the one side of the sweater. So it for sure works. Um, and again, you don't have to deal with the batteries and it's a little bit cheaper than the sweater shaver, but really any of those options would work just fine. What you don't wanna do with those is you don't wanna take your fingers and pinch the pills and then pull them off one by one because you inevitably will um, create a snag or um, potentially a hole. So I wouldn't do it like that. And then when you're laundering these, I think these all say dry clean only too. Yeah, these, these say two ply cashmere, dry clean only. I never dry clean these sweaters. I only hand wash them. I hand wash them in cold, gentle cycle, wool light, and then I lay them flat to dry and they come out just fine. And again, I don't wash them all the time. I only wash them when I really need to wash them. But I think I always get a better outcome when I do it myself, when I wash it myself. So 
Um, I hope that helps you guys a little bit with caring for your clothes, your more delicate clothes and your jeans. Um, I know it's tricky, but it is important to take good care of your garments if you want to keep them a long time. And with some of these things like designer jeans, cashmere sweaters, it really does behoove you to take good care of them because they're expensive and you don't want to have to replace them every season. You want to have them for 10 years. So when you take good care of them, you will have them for 10 years. Um, you know, and if you're in a small town like I am where, you know, dry cleaners are just, they're just not quite there, you know what I mean? Um, it's not like the New York City dry cleaners that, uh, that I used to have. Um, I would do a lot at home and I would just err on the side of caution and, and send as little there as possible. Sorry, dry cleaners. Um, but in my experience, stuff just comes back looking different. It's not the same. It doesn't look as vibrant. It doesn't look as fresh. It looks a little bit dingy or a little bit worn coming back from the dry cleaner. So that's why I like to do things myself. Um, and I think that it preserves the garments and I think that they look nicer, but you have to be really careful when you're doing it yourself. Um, so let me know if you have any questions at all. I hope that helps you guys again. Thank you so much for your ideas on Instagram. I really appreciate it. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do because that's sort of my Twitter. I'm really on Instagram all the time and communicating all the time that way. So I'm at Busby Style on Instagram. And um, of course, you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel and keep the video ideas coming. I love it. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. You guys have been asking me what you can wear with them. So I've established that all ages can wear them. I've established that no matter what your budget, you can find a budget friendly piece, either whether it's faux leather or you do what I do, which is target a specific brand and you find it on sale.